I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Call the meeting to order. For the motion to approve the agenda is printed. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those? Minutes from last week's meeting. I read through all the poll and they all look pretty good. I'll make that motion. I'll second Sandy's motion. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes approved. Do we have any general public concerns? Seeing none, we will move on to Mr. Lowell Johnson, Mayor of Gilmore City. Discussion and action on authorizing uh, stop signs. There, so you can kind of give us a heads up on that. We're just re requesting the on Main Street, South Gilmore Street, and C Avenue. So we put stop signs <coughs> on both Humboldt County and Pocahontas County side to slow the traffic down coming down Main Street. There's stop signs on C Avenue, you know, coming to the street. Yeah. This is the stop traffic at the bank and the post office corner. And okay, so how many blocks south of Highway 3 is that? Like three? Three, yep. Okay. Yep. I'm sure our elevator and private truckers know. <laughs> I don't know if you use that or not. I haven't been over there for. Yeah. Um, they'll get used to it. I mean, I think we're going to put a trying to put a stop sign out in the middle also we have one of those that you oh, can horrible roll ones you roll out there one. and uh, I'm going to talk to Dean about bringing over the speed sign we've used that before up on the corner mm -hmm. by City Hall as another yeah because currently there isn't any stop signs coming from the south till you get to high either way yeah. 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 Okay. Well, I do know Hardy has them, Thor has them, Jared has them. Livermore doesn't have a through road really on Main Street. No, Main Street's not an issue. Gilmore's doing it by creating a resolution and and bringing it to both boards. Other small towns have more or less just stuck them up. Oh, okay. But this is the enforceable way to do it. Okay. You could run through some of the stop signs in town if they didn't do it properly. They can't be fined. Oh, it's good to know. Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that either. You don't need to put that in the paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but they might run. That's they might run. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I talked to Pocahontas County and I talked to your office gal, Missy, yeah. um, quite a bit about that, and they, uh, I guess. Pocahontas County is going to sign off on it during their meeting. Okay. And talking to Missy last week, I said, if you want Humboldt County to sign off on it, even though we don't maintain South of Highway 3, mm -hmm. to get on the agenda. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, there you go. That's it's on our agenda for tonight. For okay. Oh. So. okay. I'll make a motion to approve Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Stop sign through. Alrighty, thank you. you Good work, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doing yeah. it the right way. Yep. Paul? Yep. Do you want to take this with you after he signs oh, it? Oh, sure. Yep. I'll need to sign it also. Have a yeah. Yeah. We have to go through yeah. the DOP, but I think it's because that was the highway coming. Yeah. Oh, at one time it was. Yeah. So we have to go through the DOP. Limited official. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you'll get a copy to us with all yeah. the answers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you mind if we run through the claims? Sure. Okay. No, Just because uh, there's a lot of other miscellaneous stuff. Let's uh, jump down to claims. Does everyone have a chance to look at them? I want to do. Overwhelming. There you go. I got $689,120.41. Mm -hmm. And drainage of forty-seven thousand four hundred and three dollars and seventy-eight cents. Yep. This is what 
Mm -hmm. And I second it. I guess just so we all know, the beginning of the year is a lot of payments for insurance and one-time allocation. Yeah. Allocations, allocations for different organizations. And I do. I do have one question. Solutions. Mm -hmm. Was that mainly for IT support, or was that some new equipment also? It's all our new software programs. Okay. It's no new equipment at all. Oh, it's just software stuff. Yep, and we do that every July. Okay. Well, just quite a bit of coming out of Rainbow Trucking. Not yet. the first by part, part of it does. <laughs> Second by Bruce. Yes. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Claims approved. We need to sign that done. Oh, yes, that's right. Let's get that done. Let me crank off a little bit and see a check like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm moving right along. I just want to get the planes out. No, you're, you're good to go. First item that I have on the agenda is a, a large chunk of that claims that you just approved. Mm -hmm. You're responsible. I'm so <laughs> proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all responsible. We're paying for it. Uh, it's to approve pay voucher number seven to Merriman Bridge uh, for the project up on Virginia Avenue for 150,285 and 84 cents. This is basically all of the remainder of the structural concrete and <coughs> and the steel that went into the deck. Uh, we had the deck for here two Thursdays ago, I believe. Um, they did the open rail last week, so we're done with all the concrete work for the job. Uh, done and cured, so we didn't have any of that 100-degree yeah. tracking. Yeah. yeah. Done and cured. And Everything looks nice. I haven't driven over the top of the deck yet, uh, but they have been on it. I mean, they used the cement truck for the open rail. We had enough strength. Oh, they did. Um, they've got dirt work left, guardrail, and seating mainly. So, I mean, mm -hmm. they're picking up and moving the cranes and stuff out that they don't need there anymore. But, yeah. 84% were. It's one of the smoother projects that bridges for moving along. It's, yeah. it's gone pretty well, yeah. yeah. I would make a motion to approve that to Merriman pay voucher number seven for one fifty two eight five point eight four. Oh, go ahead. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The second item that I have on the agenda is to approve the application to work in the county <coughs> right away for Ron Oberhelden. Uh, this is for him to apply dust control out in front of his place and on east all the way over to Highway 17. It ends up being about a mile and a quarter. So, mm -hmm. uh, and he's got listed on his application applying lignin or Cresap. Uh, he's usually buying this from Pro Co op as well. Okay. He's got his insurance and everything here. Okay, I'll make that motion so quick. Half second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? All right. All right. All those? Please. last item that I have on here is to approve a quote from K.R. Buck with 10 point to do some PC pavement patching. He came up, I believe it was two Fridays ago, and looked at some spot locations that we've got. He's up in Palo Alto County doing patching right now. He's got work in Pocahontas County coming up. Um, down on the Museum Road, which is old State Highway 3, mm -hmm. uh, the concrete's 90 years old. You can see where it's starting to pop out in the center and we've 
filled it over time with cold patch. Mm -hmm. um, but there's about 35 locations on that stretch between uh, Allen Peterson's driveway on south to where it starts to curve going into Dakota City. Um, that's the, the top quote. Um, that's the saw cut, remove everything, and then pour new concrete in this place. Uh, I got one spot on the white top east of Rutland that's popped out. I think that's from uh, somebody unloading an excavator off of a low boy. It's just a single panel that's crushed. That's um, right there by the dredge ditch where you come west of 169 mm -hmm. about a thousand feet. Yeah. And then the last one is on the Bradgate Road. I went up and looked at that with him. Last year we tried to do some uh, crack filling to try and hold everything together. But looking at it this spring, I can see that it was continuing to crack and starting to actually pull away from the rest of the concrete. Um, so there's about three locations that are roughly 100 feet each, uh, half of one lane that we'd be looking at. So when he says these 17 panels, that's some like maybe four foot by six foot chunks where they yeah. saw cut it? Yep, so it's a five and a half foot by six foot. Okay. For each one of them panels. Um, and I just did the rough map based on his numbers to try and give me a, a, an approximation of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. That's about 50,000 in repairs for all three locations. So when they do that, when they cut that, do they auger then so right route into it? Yeah, so down, down here on uh, the museum road, that'll be thick enough that they will. Uh, up on Bradgate, I told them I need them to go full depth because that's the only road that we've got that we only did a four inch concrete overlay. Everything else we switched them up thicker where we've got anywhere between five and six inches. Mm -hmm. But up there, uh, I guess that was our first paving project back in 2008 and we were just getting into concrete overlays and, and they've recommended a minimum of four inches back then. Um, I just don't think it's as strong. Yeah, that, that extra inch that doesn't extra cost you that much. No, it, it really doesn't. Um, but yeah, this would be, for, <coughs> they will dowel in on the museum road I'm not sure if that four inches will be enough yeah, to be out of space on the Bradgate Road mm -hmm. because it's all asphalt underneath it. Yeah. That patch they did in front of my house, they didn't pin that, they just poured it and it stayed nice. Yeah, we did pull that in front of your house. Mm -hmm. And, and that would be the same thing that we're looking at for all of these. Okay. Want to get in your budget? I got about 150000 a year that I schedule for uh, pavement repairs. Um, I'm going to shoot through most of that here this month between Portage Asphalt doing work, all of our blowouts mm -hmm. that we've had where uh, Blacktop Services actually was the boat right now, patching them two locations. Uh, and, and with this, I'll be I'll be close, but most of what Fort Dodge Asphalt is doing, I had budgeted last year, and we cut a check before the end of the fiscal year to cover most of that cost, so oh. it's in last year's budget. Okay. Sounds good. I'll make a motion to approve it. I'll second the quote from 10 point. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Catching approved. Do you have anything else for repairs, replace? Uh, anything. I hope not. Um, I talked to Webster County last week. Uh, PCI was in and did two of the seven box forward projects that they had, and then they had to leave and go to a different job somewhere. And he said that they were probably planning on coming back to them at the beginning of August. So I don't anticipate them into coming to us until then. Middle yeah. of September, probably. 
No, oh, by the way, on the uh, repair that we just approved, what, approximately when they're going to do that, would you say? Uh, he said he could be here as early as next week, whether depending, uh, like I said, he's up in Palo Alto County, and it's just whether or not he comes to us before Pocahontas County. Okay. Uh, like I said, the Blacktop Service is doing passion for us. Uh, I just talked to the contractor this morning. PDC looks like it's going to be next Monday morning. Uh, they had an issue with getting the material up here from South Carolina. Um, so we got we got that going on. I think Fort Dodge Asphalt's got another week and a half of slurry leveling on these cracks, and then they'll be done. I don't know. It seems, seems busy. It does. I have a question, Ben. Sure. And I know we, you and I visited about this. I just, it's in reference to that accident down in Boone this last week where a lady ran a stop sign, hit one of their secondary roads, dump trucks. Really? Yeah. And so, and I question, and I know we don't <coughs> have a magic pot of money that we're always able to pull money out of, but I guess my question is, and I sometimes think in my own truck that I should have, you know, everybody has those cameras to for protection. Or dash or, cameras. Uh, yeah. And I guess uh, Channel 5 and Channel 8 had pictures on, uh, uh, and that's the only way that I found out it was a Boone truck, because I pulled it up and could see it said Boone Secondary Road on it. Yep. And I guess my question is, is Security-wise, if someone something like that happens, you know, I know we've had accidents before. When and where do we when would we start worrying about our liability affecting our? So as far as uh, as far as cameras, you and I talked a while back, and I spoke with a company that uh, new co-op runs with all of their trucks. They've got the capabilities of the GPS tracking. They also have uh, basically it's, it's a dash camera that records forwards and backwards. Um, in the event that you do a hard braking or uh, hard acceleration, um, if there's a sudden stop like in an accident, I think it, it goes back and it records 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. In each direction, and that's both the driver and what's in front of them. You know, so if somebody were to, you know, what the, you know what was going on, you would know what was going on. Or if you mm -hmm. see that the guy had his phone in his hand or something, mm -hmm. on, so obviously automatic termination. Yeah. An that. Um, I don't remember offhand how much it was. I want to say it was like fifty dollars a month per unit. Um, so we'd be looking at roughly 30 units per county. Um, you can do just GPS on equipment for roughly $20 a month. So well, we can sit down and, and look at the at the options. Yeah, I I I just throw that out because I I know that they're probably trying to make sure that, and according to the the way they reported it on the news was. The, the woman failed to stop at the stop sign. So, I mean, I guess the county is safe for, for that one. liability on that one, but I guess my question is, is you know, we'd still just send them in for a drug test if it was yeah. here. And I'm not chasing, I hope I'm not chasing ghosts because I seriously think for myself sometimes that when people start crossing the center line and they're coming towards you, it's like, holy crap. I don't know if it records all of the time, and, and you can go back in and, and like if, if a guy runs you off the road because they crossed the center line, he had no other choice but to take the ditch. Right. I assume it would record that because obviously you yeah. can ditch. Um, I think the company's name was Sansara, if I remember right. I think that was some, something like that. They're based out of Seattle or Portland or somewhere mm -hmm. on the West Coast. Well, to protect the county from liability. I mean, if you have something yeah. recording that, I mean, it's just... 
I can pull all that stuff together and, and bring it in. We can look well, I'd just like to look at it and see what. I mean, I like the idea of, of uh, AVL or, or GPS on all of the equipment for winter time. You know, you, you called me once or twice last winter wondering if we'd gotten by somebody's road over by Gilmore. You know, I, I could look at it right there while yeah, we were on the phone. Yeah, and the yeah. too, yeah. yeah. going by there this morning. Yeah. Or my road hasn't been maintained for months. You can say, well, he went by four times. I don't know whether he had the blade, blade down, but he went by. Yeah, and usually with those, you can, you can tell based on the speed of the... Oh, faster moving, yeah. Yeah, if they're doing 15, they probably didn't have the blade down. All right. If they're doing five, they got it down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but uh, for reasons like that, uh, wintertime, <coughs> did we actually get every route done? You know, you could look at the end of the day and say, okay, crap, we got 10 miles in Grove Township that we haven't touched yet. We need to hit that first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's a good day. You just need it. Yeah. You know, I, I mean... I think it's something that we, we need to look into. Right. Well, I'm not, and I'm not trying to spend more of your money, but I just think that for the security of us, the liability well, that we have. If, if that one from Sansara is $50 a month times 30 units, you're looking at $1,500 a month. You're looking at $18,000 a year to have that mm -hmm. equipment. And you know that our truck was in inside the box or right. stopped, he was at the stop sign or he pulled away or whatever, at least I think that would be a... Now in the, in the most recent accident that we had up on 169 like a year and a half ago, I don't know that that would have recorded it because the accident was on the Sorry, rear, 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 rear passenger tire. Mm -hmm. But it would still record what my driver was doing. Right. It's a good tool to use. We allow to use technology if it's out there just to keep everybody. Yeah, I'll, I'll bring that folder in. I'll bring that folder in. We can just look at it. That's all that you get. Another, another thing, maybe give our insurance guy a call and see if we get any kind of breaks if you do have that equipment. No, no. That's a good idea. And they might give you some sort of reduction, too. Uh -huh. Okay, I think I'll just that. That's a good idea. I think we got a meeting with Workman's Comp next week. Do we want to do that here, or are we doing that? Telephone. Telephone. He's not coming. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, something interesting that I think we could take a look at if it won't take too long. We have uh, approval of destruction of electric. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, after so many months, we're able to get rid of election registers, which would be the um, envelopes that were involved in absentee voting, um, any of the supplies from the polling places, um, the actual ballots themselves. Um, so we have three elections that qualify for uh, destruction of their time. Okay. All right, we'll make a motion to approve the destruction of the election records from the primary election of June 5th, 2018. Special election for Humboldt Ward 1, August 13th of 19, and the combined city school election from November 5th, 2019. Okay. First and second, any further discussion? I have a question. Do you no. burn them? Do you shred them? Or how do they, how are they destroyed? Currently, we're, yeah, we use them in an incinerator. That's what I want to know. Okay. And we keep all of our, you know, all the totals from the election, all the candles, yeah. all the but ballots. But the actual ballots and all envelopes those. are the ones yep. that are I mean, the votes have already been recorded. You guys have already done the canvas. Um, the time for, you know, closing anything on the canvas is long past. Sure. So no reason to keep any of that other stuff. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those? There you go. Okay. Uh, another interesting thing, we have approval of a Bible meeting from the 14th to the 17th of this month, and information here on that. Same group. The Brownsville and his group have done this for the last quite a few years. Um, they are very easy to work with. They don't ask for much. Um, they ask for electrical outlets so they can have some light in case they're here at night. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be, as you read through his letter, a little bit different this year. They may be in their cars just for trying to keep 
cool and social distance. Yeah, and park their motor trucks or whatever. They, they could if they want to. He hasn't mentioned he's going to bring it, but he certainly is welcome to. Why well, right. make that motion to accept? I'll second it. Any further discussion? Yes. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. 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 that we have an audit proposal with P.P. Anderson and Company. Every year they send us an audit proposal for the, for the year just ended, the 2019-2020 um, year. And it's pretty standard as far as the language goes. There's our fee on page uh, 4. Uh, for services to be 21.5. Sometimes they don't turn in enough, you know, sometimes it's less than that. Mm -hmm. um, if they run into some unusual circumstances, it could be more, but it, um, it gives you a good idea. We haven't had any issues in the past. No, 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 they're very good to work with. And I know the, the state also does the auditing, but quite often they're way more expensive. They would probably be double the amount yeah. that's on there. That's when I first from counties, they're anywhere from 45 to 50,000. Yeah. I'd make a motion to approve or authorize the chairman to sign the audit proposal. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Sign. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then uh, we have that one. Uh, authorizing the chairman to sign financial report proposal for P.P. Anderson and Company. Okay, we've had P.P. Anderson help us also with the financial report in the past. Um, on page two, they talk about preparation of the report anywhere from 1500 to 1650 and uh, depreciation updates anywhere from 600 to 700. And they have done this for the last several years. Um, we do the cash part of the financial report and then they do what's called the gap, which is their accrual. So I'm going to give this page to you, Eric. Oh, that one? Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to authorize the chairman to sign a financial report proposal from T.P. Anderson and Company. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We've also been using them on our um, ministerial board for for uh, food pantry. pantry. Mm -hmm. Just being there here. Mm -hmm. And that way the ministers don't have to have a different church is dealing with that. Right. There it is. Okay, we got those. <coughs> we could accept and place on file the court recorder's quarterly report. The recorder ended June 30th, 2020. Reports from the reporter. And make a motion to accept for a report. Okay. Reports. Both of them. Both of them? <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Yes, she is here. Then we have uh, <laughs> Treasurer's semi annual report for the quarter end of June 30th. Okay, we've
She's going to make us work harder with the smaller I know. I know. I know. <laughs> She's testing my eyesight. Uh-huh. Well, I'm second to that. Saving paper this way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. First and a second. Any further discussion? Trey Jerry. I'll give you this one. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those. Trey Jerry's semi annual report approved. And we have the auditor's quarterly report in the June 30th one. Well, unfortunately, it's nowhere near what everybody else brought. I was just going to say, did you get a security guard to take that down? <laughs> 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 um, your approved stamp is going to go up. Um, you can see the drastic changes that COVID-19 did have. That was her. That's what she took in. Yeah. That's what she took in. As I was trying to explain, you can see the drastic changes from COVID-19. We had no passports. Yeah. Uh, didn't sell many flat books. Um, usually this time of year we're very busy with passports and we have a lot of that go through. We've had very few. Even now, um, even passport services can't give us any time frame if anybody applies for a passport of when they may get it. Hmm. Oh, they really? are backlogged. They, they're, they just can't seem to get caught up and I'm sure not well, everybody's if they working yet. Home, it probably doesn't work real well. Yeah. yeah. That would be one thing to be very hard to work from home. Yeah. So we've been cautioning people, you know, we can submit it for you. We have had a few, but we can't guarantee so you when you're going to get back. Don't wait. If you, if you need one, get after it. Right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I make a motion to accept the order of these quarterly reports. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All of these reports. Hey, Peggy. For the passports, are they able to go to um, Minneapolis? Yes, but they can still get the same response that we would give them. Oh, okay. um, Unless they're doing like a courier, you know, same day if they wanted a same day type of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they can do them any faster or not. I would just faster to do that. I would take my aunt up there. Oh, did you? Got, yeah. that, got that same day. It was yeah. a process. You had to stand in line a long time, yeah, I've heard. Yeah, it was unreal. See, and ours go through <laughs> New Orleans. Oh, no. oh New Orleans. really? That's, that's really? our region. We have to send them to our region. region. So cool. Oh, I know. know. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, wow. U.S. government, a lot of it yeah. doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do we say, right? Yeah. Well, we <laughs> most of them go in the drain. There you have it. Left until 9.15, can we do our reports? Well, we have the 9 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, we are, we're late, yeah. I'll make, Dave made motion, I'll second it. Any further discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Rolls, we are in green. Okay. Okay. And did I hear that thing trick? Yes, yeah, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well have to get that. That's right, sounds good to me. <laughs> Your mom came into church yesterday. She did. She yeah. told me that. She said her... She her get, got her old pew back, too. <laughs> <laughs> her sister didn't come, so she said, I decided I'm going to come in. We had some people sitting in the fellowship hall, but mm -hmm. well, last week it was so unbearable hot, I was worried about a couple of them out in the parking lot. So, Eric, do you want coffee? No, thanks, Bruce. I'm cutting back on my coffee. Yeah. Okay. Okay. First thing in the morning. Oh, I've been that way. I don't really care for that. Can't? Yeah, I'll drink more. I'll drink it at noon and in the afternoon and the evening. And I can't stomach it after breakfast, really. Sam bought me over to a picture on Facebook yesterday at 3 o'clock. You know, everybody has coffee at oh, 3 yeah. o'clock on the farm. Oh, yeah. And he made peach cobbler. And oh, he, God. And, he goes, <laughs> and if you don't have whipped cream, it's not the the way it's supposed to be. I swear it's whipped cream. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stand. It looks delicious. <laughs> uh, How's this wife doing? Uh, yeah. We are looking at DD number 125. Approval of the 20 agreement amendment. 
Here's the two I'll have you sign. Okay. Um, it's just to extend the time so we can receive final payment. Mm, is that what it is? Yeah. And it's my friend has the payment ready for us. So we just need to extend the payment time. Did you say Mike Borland has the payment ready? Okay. So this is just to basically keep us within guidance of the Point. Yeah. Yeah. Just so he can issue the payment. Okay. One twenty five, that will be west out here. It's north. Okay. East of Gilmore, right? Yeah. That's the one that did the several wells and went north into that pond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, sounds like a good deal. This would be final, final, all done. Yeah. T's cross, I's dotted, and checks in the bank. I haven't Check heard anything bank. more on the pond, so hopefully it's working well. Mm hmm. I'd make a motion to approve the 28 agreement for the final payments for the IDL then on 125. I'll second the extension. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All those signed Yes, so I know at our IDDA meeting they were talking about a lot of projects starting to do these type of applications where they dump into a pond and try to reduce some of the nitrates and stuff if they go up or you dump into rivers or streams and so we're ahead of, ahead of the schedule. So if they go in a pond, do they evaporate out or anything? They don't Plant life takes up a lot of it. Oh, Usually it looks like out here we have a sediment yeah. pond that catches some of the sediment. There you go. Okay, thank and you. then it dumps from that into another pond. Uh, and then it goes through a pipe out to the river. So it's leached out all the way. Yeah, it helps. Okay. It helps. Okay. Depends on how heavy a range you get and how much, you know. But they thought maybe 10 years. It does. I didn't find any drill boat through there. I think they had to remove some trees or something. Pretty much fell through. Yeah. It's similar down here to like and Kennedy Lake. They have that sediment pond. And they just dredge right that out again here. Yeah, I guess they call it Badger Lake. They call it Kennedy Park, I guess. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. Yeah, that's what I was 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 thinking. Yeah, for what? Yeah. Because I think all I have to do is cut the check, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think that's all I'm <coughs> going to do. Nothing ever moves very fast in that office. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, they extend it from January to mm -hmm. August. It's been done a long time ago, but. Oh. Do you have anything else? And range because I just asked Trish and said his name on the yeah. agenda that he was planning on being here. Well, we can take a short recess until then. Unless, you want we, got to. Something, unless we got something to talk about. I guess I was out to uh, ED 10 and looked that over, and he has gone through sections uh, 21, 16, and 9. He's right at the uh, 9 and 10 <coughs> is a uh, two mile section. He's right at the middle of that. So he's got about, I'd say, two thirds of it done. Rick Peterson does well, it there. I mean, is it looking like it's getting lighter as he's going? Oh, it's getting heavier. He's, getting, he's taking out more silt, but the ditch gets shallower, which I, I was out talking with Brandon Myers a couple of weeks ago about it. And he says, You can't believe when you get a, a shallow ditch you can dig so much faster. What do you mean you can dig so He says you don't spend up so much time bringing it up and swinging. He says that few few seconds adds up in a day to a lot more footage in a day. 
Hmm. So he's really moving along now. I think it'd be easier to see. see. And to yeah. see, yeah. yeah. I said otherwise he'd let that be working blind. But uh, yeah, he's. Okay. And it really I did looks have nice. I had a call on that where he had hit a couple bank pipes because he couldn't see them. Couldn't see them, yeah. yeah. So we'll need to repair those. Yeah, that happens. But um, there ain't much water in it either. I was going to say, the water's probably way down. Yeah, Jesus. Six inches of water, maybe. Six inches? Yeah, there ain't much up there. It <laughs> won't be long until it'll be taken out of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if they want to get that used yeah. up, they'll get more water out of there. I don't know. I was going to drive up this weekend to see it. Uh, oh, okay. Pipes coming from the north and dial and oh, yeah. pick up the stairs okay. letting water out that I didn't get up there before dark yesterday, so I no, try to get up there and see if the best thing has been running pretty yeah. steady. Well, these last, these last few weeks, the old tiles have dried up. That corn sucking up about all the moisture in the ground there is right now. <laughs> well, that corn's starting to roll a little bit. It's mm -hmm. a little dry. You ought to see what it looks like down south. They have not had any rain. South and west of here? Yeah. If you just you just keep going south and you get south of Fort Dodge to Ames and Ankeny. I mean it still looks pretty good, but it's they just have, their lawns are burnt up around that area. Mm. Burnt up, not but they, they just have not caught any rains. They were running irrigators over by Auburn uh, yeah. on on Saturday. Or in Lakeview. Uh Speaking of ongoing projects, Rick said number 10, number 18, Rick Peterson just ran in the end. They're still taking away on that one too, and it's that's a big deal. And there's a lot of stuff. And they're making good progress, so mm -hmm. with the conditions. Yeah, yeah so it's just a big system. That, yeah, that is. 18 is a huge, system. huge. But he just said he wanted to tell us that you know they're still out there. They're still going. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know they have two excavators, so. They're on both projects simultaneously. And then we move on, like we said, on the end. Yeah. Uh, 18 as well, so. Um, I had a question from Brandon Meyer just before I come in here. Okay. I wanted to know who, the, who installed or who the company that was responsible for the giant electric towers. That was Mid American, wasn't it? It was an easy source, but it was. On behalf of the American. Okay. So I'm assuming he's wanting to contact them because he's going to be going under their line. Mm -hmm. So it should be in the American. American. Okay. Yeah, you could check with Rick Peterson because he just went under them here this last few days because he shot underneath that line here just recently. Cleaning out, the oh. Cleaning out the ditch on number 10. Was it call them and they're telling them that they're in the area or? I don't know. I think I he just think wants to talk to them. Just to make sure that if they have to de- I don't think they will they'll have to de-energize anything. No. They will not de no. I think what, it, what he's probably asking is how far away do I have to stay? Double checking. We have the same thing. He said if we ever have to replace the bridge, like there's one just north of uh, C-26. Mm -hmm. If we ever have to replace that and get a crane in there, you know, what's it going to take to... Well, let's be done with tobacco. <laughs> more, yeah, more or less that uh, an act of Congress. It's not going to happen. Really? Yeah, like, oh. Okay. Um, so I'll let you know then. You yeah. You need to call them. Yeah. And there is a gas pipeline out there, too, and I made him aware of that, so he's going to do a one call on that. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Yeah. So where is Brandon working? On uh, 3 or 4.59. Out here being Webster, south they come east out and of town. Like they do in town, you know, if you, yes. you dig in. Yes, I don't know if they'll come out so much mark, but they'll come out and show him where the pipes are. Oh, okay. You know. I think it's Northern National. Yeah, I think it is. He could get the plane could spot him if he didn't. Yeah, because yeah, they they fly them occasionally if somebody's digging without calling. She was just in my office two weeks ago. I think that's the one that's running. The old plant. Yeah, it probably does. Goes that direction. Now, um, 
Crystal called me last week and said uh, they have a work order. Well, Mark Thompson wants to have an eighth of a mile into Webster County done. On um, 459? Well, so why don't we let Brandon know that now because it might as well be. And he knows. Oh, he does. Okay. Yeah. And it's the same where it is. Yeah, he wants to go same further. one. He wants to go a little further into Webster. We went and I walked down to the county line, looked at it, and it ain't bad, but it, it could use it. But you, we drove around to the other bridge with him, and he, he thought it looked good from the bridge, but that's still a mile. You, you know, it's a two mile section there. So it would, wouldn't hurt to go back in there a little bit. Does this get ahead. done on a work order basis? Mm hmm. Remember, he also looked, while well, Dave and I went out and looked at a concern repair of his, we looked at ED5 as a work order mm -hmm. with Brandon. Because he, what did you? Okay. That, remember, Dave, that day that we were out and we looked from a couple different spots. But well, like I said, Rick, you're looking, if you look from a road here or a road okay. there, I've driven around part of it and he was going to check out, Brandon was going to check out part of it. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, you want to get. Kind of an estimate. Did he give you? Any yes, kind he did. Estimate. Yeah. Well, he well, says it. He says it'll be in that below the. Oh yeah. The, the work, work order limit. Yeah. So. And that's what we said. Same exact example on DD five because um, it needs it too. It, it really does. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's not a large system distance wise. But I think that it's uh, start at the end or you know all that goes at the beginning mm -hmm. because it. It appears that you get the last half of it is probably where it's worse. Well, for half. Yeah, the lower, yeah. the lower end's pretty the lower looks pretty good. Just a little attention. So. Yeah. But there again, you need a pretty rough estimate at least. Mm -hmm. Just send them in there. Willy nilly, you find out. Without, mm -hmm. you know. So he'd order that one. Well, do you have to uh, tell Webster County then? They have we've, to we've been in. They yeah. They, called. they actually, I think Mark called Keith Denslar. Yeah, I've been in conversation with Keith, Keith, uh, Keith because that's his area. Okay. So they are the joint district. Yeah. So should be fine. Perfect. Does anyone have Mark Daggy's phone number? I think. Like, uh, we could get him a call or we could just discuss it. I think I have it on the inside of the office. Trish probably has it, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I got the two oh five thirty seven ten. Yeah. I've got a couple different numbers, yeah. Yes, so I wanted I'm two oh five sure this one. Yeah. We wanna call him then. Yeah, we should. I think so. Yeah, it's, it's 9.20, just about. in the auditor's office. Yes, I'll, I'll, I'll be right there. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, bye. bye. All right, bye. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. over there. <laughs> we, we have opposition against doing that job. Well, I think we have to, if BNC's requested, we probably have to formally go through the process. Is that right? Probably have a hearing, yes. Have a hearing and have to take the 
the remonstrance request. And Which, uh, well, it's his, my question is his request of enlarging the tile. I'm already doing that. No, his oh, request is to uh, put an improvement sorry. into DDA 88. Right. right, but it also says request a larger culvert under road. Well, didn't you guys? That's, we've already heard that. Scott yeah. Peterson do uh, exploratory here like three months ago, didn't you? That was uh, Westergaard was out and did it. Okay. Yeah, he, just, he did it on. He did it for Westergaard. Yes. But, yeah, but I, the, the larger culvert under the road that we're already taken care of. Yeah, I think we've already proved that, haven't we? It's uh, we're going to do it with county forces mm -hmm. when PCI moves in to. Uh, do the one by the Gosh Park Bridge. So patch it down. And we got to close the road. That's what I want. We're going to do ours at the exact same time. That way we're not inconvenienced. Twice. Humble concrete. concrete. Twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, all inconvenience. Uh, Scott Becker, Erickson, and. Uh, yeah, they'll be kind of landlocked there for a little bit. They'll have, they'll have to go all the way south they'll around. They'll take Hamilton's gravel. Yeah. But I, I think we can. You'll be done in a day. We can do ours in a day. So. Yeah. It's just going to be the one day that they'll be in mm -hmm. And I'm looking at putting in like a squash 24 inch, which is almost three times bigger than what's there. Bigger than the 15 inch that's there right now. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if there's not an improvement, will that affect that's anything with the flow? I'm not going to do anything with the tile on it. No, he's just surface floor. That's just surface. Culvert. Yeah. Okay. It's just surface. An existing culvert. Yeah. And without knowing, originally I wanted to do it at the same time. They did the tile project, tile but it, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen. Right. So there is the tile that crosses mm -hmm. through there. The tile that crosses real close to this crossbar. Yeah. So okay. is this like halfway in the middle of that road, or? Uh, west of Scott Becker's house, almost to the half mile. Line. Water goes over the road every time we get a heavy, heavy rain. So that was my question: Is will the water come from? It does, will it go south to north? North. It will go north. north. Yeah. Will we have to go farmers to if that water is dumping into there? It yeah. already already goes there now. I know, but it's going to a lot faster yeah. than the 24 inch pipe. But well, it's the the 24 inch is mainly an equalizer between the two. There's intakes on the north and south yeah. side. Ditch, and that's the only way that water actually runs yeah. through there. Unless I mean, when it gets deep enough, it'll run across, across the field, but yeah. a lot of it goes down and takes. I think I just seen pulling. So. Yeah, this is one of those stretches where the field is as high as the road on this side. Mm -hmm. So, if you know, with a real big pipe, this is going to pick up mm -hmm. a shallow ditch. And it, will it be late fall when they, when they come in and do that box? Because that'll be PCI when they get done in August, that'll be September. So. Mm -hmm. Is that box going to be made in Humboldt or is it going to bring it from Des Moines? <laughs> I think it's coming from Humboldt. Well, oh, like sometimes they only make certain boxes. Yeah. I know you mentioned they were just going to haul it down there in the forklift. That's what they were joking about, just picking it up with forks and hand delivering it to them. So. Yeah. Well, that'd be the type that somebody put it on the trailer and not tie it down and then roll off into the ditch. Yeah. yeah. Is it possible to put the other tile in? I, I thought of that too, but. If I don't know the elevation. We don't know the elevation. Yeah, you don't want to. Right. It would have. Fire too low. Yeah. So they're still going to have to do I, I thought of that too because then you don't have to patch a road once. Right. right. But if it doesn't happen, it may not sure. happen for 10 years. If it's happening late fall for our crossing, I'll probably leave it gravel until next year. Winter and, and patch it. Mm -hmm. it's not next year. There he is. Is that a point of COVID? <laughs> 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 like everything else is. Well, you've been sweating, so at least we know you weren't sitting in Washington yet. <laughs> well, we even got you on the agenda, Mark. So. Piece. Um, uh, you're dead, right? Yes. And you want to line the C49 yes. from Gosh Park Road over to 169? 
from uh, Gosh Park Bridge. Oh, you're going to go, uh, we're gonna go up, up the hill and over to 169 to go. And then you're going to have to deepen the ditches because there's no ditch down there. It's like you got two feet. Probably. We got about a two foot ditch right now. We're not looking at deepening them a whole lot. We'll dig back to what the play line was. So, but the main the main goal of the project, I guess, is to build shoulders wider. I mean, right now, a lot of that road only has like a two foot shoulder. If you have trouble here. Yeah, you can't really pull off of the road, and it's it's tight for if, if there's two farmers coming together, it gets really tight. So we're trying to get a about. A, Five six foot shoulder on either side. But that that farm is so wet, I get stuck out there all the time. It's like jello. I mean, the soil just regulates so much water. Out. They need to get pattern tile on the farm. But where I dump it, just, uh, I could use more tile underneath the road because my you know goes a little bit down. I know he's, he's uh, Ben says they're going to put a squash 24 we're through the road. Underneath the road, probably September. We're planning on doing it at the same time that PCI is doing the box cover replacement down at the bottom of the area. Is that going to be enough to drain that five or ten acres? I mean, it, it should be. You're talking, it's a 15 inch that's in there right now. 24 or four or five times the amount. Yeah, it's about uh, roughly three times the amount of what that 15 does. Um, and we'll clean the dish out in either direction, you know, 50 feet while we're there, uh, which will help flow as well. But the only way that the water usually runs is through the tile system. Oh, it's going down I mean, it. it it balances the water on both sides of the road unless we get a really heavy, heavy rain. Then we have a 15 inch county tile coming up to the road. Mm -hmm. And how big it is in the, I think it's in the now Chris's field. I think it's 15. Ben, what are you winding in that hole? It's in uh, a five year plan, I think. Our plan is to purchase right away next year and then construct the following year. That's a couple of years. Yeah, because okay. yeah, there's some utility poles that last the There's really utilities that have to be moved. Uh, Mid American's got all the elect uh, overhead electrical on the north side of 270th and on the west side of, of Gash Park. What's cost? That's the cost. We don't have to pay it. By us widening the right of way, uh, that comes, comes on the state. That comes on to Mid America. No. To move those lines. Oh, the cost oh. to move the dirt. So, uh, uh, the excavation part. Uh, I, no think, shoulders. I, I think I got. Uh, I think I got like three hundred thousand planned for the whole project, buying the right of way and the construction. And everything. Will that go on the tax to landowners or how does that? It's in my construction program. It comes out of the total county budget. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it comes out of my secondary road budget. Anyway, I'd like to get a bigger tile in there. You said seventy three percent people said they didn't want it. Yeah. That means I gotta change that to under seventy. Uh, you got to do some negotiation or talking to people. That's what I did with Ed Sheldon when he was still alive. Mm -hmm. All these projects. Go on, you know, go and have the conversations with your neighbors. Explain, the, talk to Scott explain the benefits. Or mm -hmm. I take it they don't want to. No, no. I've talked to Karen several times and her and her sister do not want to do this. And they have the majority of the acres. I was going to say that the majority is 185 yep. acres right there. Yeah. But if, if I get under 70, will the board look at it or am I still out? What does it take to get approved? 50, over 50% 50 of the landowners, only 70% or greater of yeah. the land. But you have to have both, right? Yes. Yeah. 
So if I get that down under seventy, I'll probably come back. And yeah. Ask for your help. Well, yeah, we basically have to go by the percentage. Yeah, if we meet yeah. the the guidelines, of the or I shouldn't say the guidelines, the uh, code. Um, yeah, then that'd be a fine project. Yeah. Well, between Mark's land at 92 acres, then there's the 185, and everything else is just there's one for 48, nine acres. Everything else is like two to five acres. Yeah, two to very ten, good. So you're, I mean, it's small. Who owns the land just? Southwest of me. It's that lump that goes out into toward 169. Mm -hmm. I figured that'd be curved. It'd be over towards that big. There's kind of a lump that goes mm -hmm. straight south. Yeah. That all drains through my farm underground. And those, it's really wet out. Yeah, that what uh, would be the northwest corner of that field drowns out. I mean, if you get a half, half inch rain, that all runs to that corner of that field. But in order to get over 70%, I'd need maybe another 20 or 30 acres, which she has. Um, is that the carpenter? No, carpenter is just the. North. Are they? I don't think they're in the district. We probably don't want to do anything until you get your roadway if you're going As far as what? Your tile improvements? So you can do that at any time. Probably going to have to. Yeah, if I put the cross pipe in in September, you're not going to have this tile project going in, in time. I mean, originally I wanted to do them both at the same time, but uh, one day they mentioned that there was opposition to the tiling project, and I had talked to you. I just decided we're just going to do it while we got it. Yeah, I'm trying to get my Otherwise, backs out here so I can see. Humble concrete. Yeah, well, I have to figure out through the 10, 15 minutes. They've got a lot of loads in and out. So. so probably we're looking at two or three years to get this all done. Well, I'll have, I'll have the crossing done in September. Okay. I mean, that will take me a day. Uh, two years down the road. The road widening is two years down the road. And then, you know, the tile project. Do you know what size tile goes to the road there? Sorry. It's an 8 or a 10. It's a 10? I think so. And it's way too small to bring it all that down. Yeah. And it, is it lending to the south of you then? Yeah. Okay. How okay. much has she got in the district? Um, 27 or something like that. 19 Yeah, 19. 19 plus 9 would be more than 30%. Push the thing through. Percentage wise, just 30. Yeah. So, how many acres do we need to get over the 30% of 32? I could give you the sheet. How many is in the total in the district now? 365.255. 355. Five times three would be 15 or 20 acres. 110. So we have enough if I can get her. <coughs> I'm trying to get this done while I still have the main power. And I'm 71 now. Mm -hmm. There's going to come a time where I don't. Or can't. Right. I petitioned God daily to let me work till I'm 85, so we'll see. <laughs> I have no intentions of retiring. Getting slower, little guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, you know, farmers all know that drainage is about the most important thing on your farm. 
so on. I'm trying to move toward organic crops. Last fall, you could sell uh, corn for three fifty, three sixty bushel. Organic corn sold for eleven twenty eight. Mm -hmm. No brainer. But in order to do that. You got you got to be able to get in there when you need to get in there. Yeah. If it's a wet farm, you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. yeah. Of well, the three things, we got the time frame on the lightning in the road. A couple years down the road, a couple years out. Uh, the larger culverts going in this fall. Mm -hmm. And I think Rick made a pretty common sense point with this information, the percentages, you've got the landowners to visit what to yeah. get it past Vermont. Convince them into the fact that it's needed. If they can see the need for a larger pile. And a lot of the problem right now with the price of corn, people just don't feel like they can afford it. I'm sure that's a lot of it. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know. Three dollar corn nobody wants it. No, nobody wants to spend any no, money. They don't have the extra money right now. And ours, ours so what we can do is pretty much spelled out. We have to go. Yeah, we have to follow the code. If there isn't enough people to, or if they oppose it, and it's down, we have more than remonstered by far and away. So when it gets to the point where it isn't, I mean, yeah. we don't have any. Yeah, we, we do have the authority to not go ahead with the project. We, we know, all, but we right can, now we can't, can't say yes. yes. But we can deny a project, but we cannot approve a project above a mock remonstrance. Right. So. Well, our business is in the million dollar budget. First quarter was up 50%, in June was up 100%. We have the contracts sent for the Department of Public Health. And you could, our press is running every day. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So not everybody's poisonous. No. You're right. <laughs> so, do we want a motion? of some sort to say that, or do we have to have a formal hearing? I, I don't think so. I mean, you want us to go through the formal hearing, I'll ask you, because you're the one who petitioned for this project. Let me go over to this person that's southwest of me. Yeah, I and have to pay for her title, I will. Well, you let us know whether you want us to proceed with the formal hearing. Because it's going to take a while for her to get yeah. people informed, right? Yes. I mean, you can't do this next week. No. no we I have to have enough time that. to. Quite a process. Probably. What's the time frame? 20 days on the hearing? Yeah. Well, I'd probably give them 40. Is it 40 days? It's 40. 40 days. Okay. But unless. These percentages change by the time you have a hearing. The house comes on. Yeah. So it's just a to, to make more process. Yeah. To have it, and then you'll still get the same answer. But you are you yeah. today. Yeah. But, 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 like but you look at the calendar, and it's July 13th and 40 days. We're looking at September, so right. that's. The but it'd be a project you could get done for next year. Good. Next year. Right. It might right. get done next year. No, I know, but I'm just saying, in order for her to get it. Mm -hmm. Depending on what happens then, we don't know what's the, where we're going. Right. But I want to make sure we get everybody's fair amount of time. Yes. Because right. a lot of these are not the absentee landowners. Yeah, they're absentee landowners. They're not farmed by mm -hmm. people right here. And they're just going by what their tenant tells them. Well, I got three dollar corn, or I got my corn sold to three ten. Mm -hmm. I sure don't want to have my rent jacked up because right. I put in. Mm -hmm. So there looks like the project's going to go through and you find out in September or you know, even uh, by next spring, also have just a gravel patch on the road. And then you'd know not and, to patch it. And then it. I'd know not to patch the road Until because you're going to be coming through with a tile. Mm -hmm. you know, you just and have if to it does go through, um, I would assume it wouldn't take long for Rick to get the bid No, because he's already done this. And we could you know, it, in the winter. Yeah, you you could take bids winter, in the winter, winter. it'd be done early spring. Right. Winter, winter. Winter, winter. Winter, winter. So I'll, winter. I'll know before before spring. Yeah. If I can catch that or if I should just leave it as right. 
Yeah. Well, unless the percentages change hearing or no hearing, it's not going to change yet. Right. So right. I, I think that the process of the hearing is moving point at this point. Well, if Mark visits with a he couple of them, then something the appears to change in the the trips, then we can schedule it. The the percentage percentage is 40 days. Give me a time frame in which you'll know. Like I said, I had a farm for eight, this is my eight, 18th or 19th crop. So it's just something I'm working at. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you could let me know in a couple of weeks. Just so I can make sure not to follow up or do whatever. Yeah. Thank you guys. Yep. Yeah, thank you, you Mark. Sorry for the latest. No. That's all right. We sat and visited and talked some things over. Okay. Anything else on Drake? Anything going on down Webster County with the railroad? They had any response? Any? Nothing as of yet. Nothing in writing? Yeah, they, well, gave, they, they gave them a fairly really short deadline to get back. That's what I wondered. Did you attend that meeting? No, that was, I did say that uh, we got. Uh, no, it was just uh, the engineer and the railroad and the, the legal counsel. Um, so they had just a short teleconference meeting. Uh, they should know, speaking of uh, short notice, um, inclusion of discussion, the Pacific Railroad would discuss internally to determine their preference for a repair if they agree on payment. They will have a request by the week July 13th. Mm -hmm. So the railroad is supposed to get back this, this week. This week. So we might know something by next Maybe. Week. And then yeah. you have a short notice. They in the their <laughs> discussion spelled everything sure. out for their <laughs> options and hopefully the railroad will respond mm -hmm. before the end of this week. So yeah. That's the date they gave. Good. Uh-huh. Hold your breath. <laughs> but yes, that is the date. You're right, Rick. It was a short I thought it was. You know, a couple of weeks to discuss it, and they're supposed to get back to the engineer and the legal counsel this week. Mm -hmm. They're getting people on vacation, and they won't yeah. get back to <laughs> Anything else drainage related? Welcome to the water drainage. Sorry. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All those drainage. That's why you played football, Bruce. Exactly right. <laughs> I watched Ben walk out the door. I'm thinking I he carried too many shingles or something. I saw him kind of. Uh, uh, uh. yeah. You know, when you have a packet and then you get another packet and then you put it in there and then it just like it all goes together. And mm -hmm. Trying to get better at organizing and pitching rather than trying to throw away the stuff you know you're not going to have to go back to. All righty. We are down to committee reports. Okay. Uh, Wednesday, I had a um, dog shelter meeting at 6.30 out at the shelter. Basically, talked about purchasing some sinks for a dog wash, um, a utility sink, and um, there had a presentation from the radio station in Fort Dodge. What was it? Is it Clerk? No, that's not Clerk Channel. What was that called? I can't remember now. Uh, represents all the stations. Six, six yeah. stations. Yeah. I heard. Is that what? Uh, is it there? Uh, no. Alpha Media. Alpha, Alpha Media. That's it. Alpha, Alpha Media. And they are going to sponsor a, a oh, fun yeah. run for anything that's street legal. For they're going to call it tails, to whiskers and tails, something like that. For a benefit for a shelter, and for in town here. So 
Late, uh, late August, wasn't it? Uh, 29th. 29th of August. So I think they've done it for almost home yeah. and Fort Dodge a couple of times. About a 200 mile run. They do it every year for different organizations. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be about a 200 mile, seven stop run. Yeah. Five to seven. Five to seven stops. You can on take the five stops. You can take the short loop out. or the big loop. Seven. So. Huh. They're going to they're going to organize it all, and they're just going to need a few volunteers to sit at the local establishments and so 50, 50 chances and t-shirts, t-shirts, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a good thing for the. Yep. Um, and then on Thursday I had an HCDA meeting. And it was a Zoom meeting. Um, a lot of that stuff is confidential, so I can't talk about that. Which meeting was that? Uh, Humboldt County Development Association. By Zoom. Yeah. Nothing new. No, and, uh, there's no big industry coming to town if that's what you're thinking. You also have an LAC meeting. Oh, I did. That's right. LAC meeting last Monday. That was it for me. Okay, on Monday, I. <laughs> We pulled the flags. We were going to do the flags. Then I got a phone call. Well, they are doing the flags. So I ran up here and we ended up getting them taken down in between the rain in the morning and they dried off. So the group that was here wanted to get them done. So we did them. On Tuesday, I seen they were out here working on that trestle. So I stopped and visited with him uh, about it. I told you what was going on with it. Wednesday they had the mobile food pantry down at the fairgrounds. Um, it's kind of a long process. They started at four, a little after four, fifteen-ish. They had a big run of people and then all of a sudden we ran out of people. So then I called the radio station and they were kind enough to put a uh, bleep on there to get people to stop down so we still had food so then we called some people that we knew from some of the shelters in Fort Dodge so we ended up doing 127 households we helped uh, three shelters uh, with multiple uh, donations so we ended up with 297 almost 300 individuals so we got rid of all the food but we thought we you know when you have a I think they had four tables, uh, eight foot tables sitting there with milk on them. And it's 85 degrees in the building. And they got those insulated blankets and we're nervous. Come on, people, we got to get rid of this milk. So, mm -hmm. uh, but we ended up getting rid of everything. So, needed more cookies. We still have to figure <laughs> out a way to get the people from Livermore or Bode or whoever to have. You know, if those people need help and they have, we have to have a name to put on in order to say, here, it's going to Bruce Reimers. So we need to have a contact person that we could say in Bode or Livermore, whatever the town is, we have six people up here. We would give them the food. But when we don't have a name to put down on there, then you don't have the ability to do that. And so we had a couple of veterans we took stuff to because um, we know they're there um, but we sure would like to if there's any outlying people yeah, around uh, we have people that said they would run it we just got to figure out who to get it to yeah who to get it to so I know the ministerial board is trying to work with through the churches through the however we do that um, because there's nothing worse than having this food and it goes up it goes to the pantry if it doesn't but they just gotten some food in and they were they get full. close on space. So, Did you get more food this month or do you think you had less people it was come about through? The same. It was about the same as what we've been doing. Okay. Um, but, you know, when you have a family comes in and they have tags, and if they have two tags and they have enough kids to qualify for double donation, well then when they get two gallons of milk, can you use four? And well, most, most people that have kids, yeah. Um, so, but it's 
it's one of those things that you just don't like wasting. Right. Because it comes from Des Moines, and that's the way you continue. If you don't use the food that you get, the next month, two months, they cut it back. So then next, uh -huh. in two months, when it starts to get colder, we might have a More whole bunch of people that show up, and, well, we're already out of food. So it, one, it's a struggle. Mm -hmm. So I, we're trying to figure out a way to get them to all the small towns that someone could be the coordinator for each town in Laverne, Livermore, whoever calls and says, all right, I got four people up here. Um, we'll get the food up to them where they at. Because there's the, got to keep the privacy deal. And no one likes to get the food, but we sure don't want to throw the food in the dumpster either. So mm -hmm. there's got to be a middle of the road somewhere. Second Wednesday every other month. Right? Yep. September 9th, I think, Kent is the next. And we had an awesome group of volunteers again. Sometimes I think we have more volunteers than uh, we know what to do with, but I don't, yes, the 9th of September is the next. And thank God the fairgrounds continues to yeah. let us use their facility because That's really I drive up they go to the north gate. They take care of all the paperwork, and then they drive down through, and they have their ticket. So we see them, and no, they don't even have to get out of the car. Get out of the car. Nice. So it's good. It was warm, but we got it done. That's all I have. Okay. Tuesday the seventh, I had a um, meeting here in Humboldt. Um, I met with Allison and Jeff and Tom and Jim 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 from what I understand, we're, I'll know more this Wednesday. We're going to have our executive meeting and HR meeting together. I'm on the HR committee, but we're going to have uh, a phone conference with DHS to see what exactly do we have to do. Because from what I understand now, um, one of the other big counties does not want to leave the SF. So to have our own region, we'd have to have Western and Sarah, from what I understand, it's not 100%. Um, not all the supervisors at Sarah want to leave CSF. So now it's like, are we? Do we? Do we really have to leave CSF or not? Uh, we've heard multiple things from different people that yes, it says shall, so it means you have to. But then there's also language, and it says may. So. So we just got to get a final ruling from DHS to see what the heck we've got. I mean, there's just so much confusion right now. And uh, so if we do have to, I don't think it'd be prudent for us to start our own region. Um, it would be good to the people who use the services for our area. They'd be that much farther behind as far as when we'd be able to keep up certain. I mean, there's just so many uncertainties right now. So if we do have to leave, do we look at looking at another um, region? There's several other regions. If they'll take us, mm -hmm. you know that's the other thing. And we're right in the middle of Pocahontas and right, and then of course we're through the south. Yeah, so, so we're basically up to whatever they do. We gotta follow. Yeah, exactly. So we're hoping that we can stay with CSF. Our services are great with CSF. We're the leaders in a lot. And of our costs lives. are. The lowest in the so states. Yeah, some of the lowest in the state for the services that we're getting. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the other thing. You know, it's just unbelievable that. But anyway. Are you getting any help from the state? Being she didn't veto anything. Well, I'm just. No, I'm I know. That was sarcastic. No, I know. <laughs> <that. laughs> well, I can see it. I can <laughs> see you. <laughs> <that. laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, and that's kind of why I, I I'd like <laughs> to say, you know, she didn't veto it, so she's just what threw it in our lap. No, oh yeah, basically it's in our lap. And you guys decide how you want to go. Yeah, DHS is supposed to help us um, through this process, but of course, has anybody from DHS reached out to us? No, we've done all the reaching out. And, and I guess that's my frustration level, you know, we're starting, and then, so that also puts us in kind of a bad situation with, with the other counties because we were just starting to get services or money allocated. We had two million allocated for a subacute, which is so needed for this area to go down in Fort Dodge. Well now, okay, are they going to do that now? Mm -hmm. That was for this year. 
we had things in process. So well, I think they did. Didn't they put that on the radio last week? The the subcute in Fort Dodge was going to be available starting and then next uh, next month that, for us. Well, the, that's the mobile that's the mobile response. Okay. So right. and that's through Barry Hill, the mobile response that started in July and then for August Western for and then August for Humboldt. Okay. Okay. All right. That you right. For our for our region. Okay. And that's a great thing too. I mean, all of this, and then there's also other things that have been. We do, we pay for services that other regions don't have that are very important because there's a lot of people that will not take their meds. So we literally, um, LifeWorks, will go out and make sure that people take their meds. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a service that CSS provides that a lot of the other regions don't don't provide. So what's going to happen to those people? And that no usually is a problem. People don't take their meds right, and then, then they have a bigger issue. Then we have an issue. So mm -hmm. it's, it's money well spent to keep everybody safe and, and themselves safe. You know, it's just, uh, I, it is. And I get, sorry, I get kind of wound up on it, but it just irritates me. Well, we're glad you're things. passionate about it. Because <laughs> that's what it takes. <laughs> <laughs> it does take that. you got to have. Yeah. So, and then, my phone just. Here you go, my book. No, I don't want you to go. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, even oh, I, even get, I even get deans that to remind me. But anyway, then there was also a really good White House um, COVID-19 conference call last Wednesday, um, the 8th. And Larry Kudlow was on it talking about the economy and everything. And he, it was very interesting. Um, Deborah Burke, Burke um, who was, um, you know, the... Uh, yeah, that's in charge of the COVID with um, mm -hmm. like that the scarf lady. The scarf lady. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. Scarf lady. <laughs> but um, she gave a very interesting talk. Um, she was talking about education too, and, and what we really need every. But and I just can't stress this enough. Everybody, when you're out in public and you can't do the six feet, you really need to be wearing your mask. They've proven that that will. It, it, before they were saying it was going to safeguard other people that in case you care, but now they're saying it is also helping, I mean it is also preventing that person. They said what, 75% um, if you're around somebody that has COVID that you will not get it either, you know, 75%. So that's a pretty high percentage. And with all the um, openings and everything, we just need, we just need people to be conscious of other people. You really mm -hmm. need to be thinking about the greater good. I know it's a pain in the butt to wear them. I hate it. Um, I've even got my husband. He's doing it now. So, <laughs> for that rag on my nuts. I'm But, um, so that, and then the Surgeon General was on there too. He talked a lot about how, you know, the education and the, um, they're talking about a lot of mental health, how much that has increased and everything with all this just because of the isolation mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And just that we need to be good neighbors. We need to be watching. Um, looking out for looking out making for sure there is movement, making yes. sure there are, yes. if they do need it, if yes. you're going to the grocery store and you it have an elderly. Right, yeah. So we just, everybody just needs to be mm -hmm. mindful of everybody else. This is the time to make you be nosy because you don't know when something's going to happen. All right. And well, how you can do to help them, too. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, busy week, but not <coughs> official. I had the dog meeting, animal shelter meeting on Wednesday. But, so we talked about different things. And, uh, I got a text. Did you get that text that the uh, back system is in? Yes. And it's coming right along. We'll probably have an open house in August. That's what we're looking at, I think they said. I see they got the fences up. Yeah. Get part of it up. Uh, they got, uh, they're going to put chain link out in the back around the rest of the property mm -hmm. and way back there. Probably not immediately. No. No. Wait. That's, that's, at the end of the project, if we have extra funds, we'll put it in now or wait till next spring or something. Uh, the cat house is in, so we're just waiting for the. That's <laughs> what, what they call them. They're I know, I know. <laughs> anyway, 
for the area, area and, and we're waiting for uh, these tubs to come in. Okay. We'll have them ordered, I guess. I think the, the biggest thing is the glass doors for the dog kennels indoors. Yeah. So when you can walk down the line, you got like a basically a glass shower door, so you can just look right in at them. And they can't yeah. can't bite you. bite you through the wire. Kids can't stick their fingers through. And on uh, Friday morning, we had a board of health meeting. That's how I had. On Monday the 6th, uh, that morning, we had an LDC meeting. That's all I had officially last week. Peggy, do you have anything that we haven't gotten to yet? I have um, sent out a notice. They're looking for nominations for their board of directors. There are two seats that are open this year. And what did they say? One city and one at large. So they're looking from one to have to be a city type person, and the one at large could be a county government. But anyway, um, if anybody's interested, this is how you send your name in. Congratulations, Rick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm working on the indications, but yeah, I'm on the committee now. Sandy, did you get the, I'm sure we all got the email, there's some online vote for NACO business coming yeah. up, and you're going to... Bill, Bill, he just needs to do that. Yes. Yeah. If he, mm -hmm. he has everything that we need now. Yes, he has everything. Okay. I sent him a note, told him, you know, that everything was set up, and so he'll be able to pick up the credentials and okay. Perfect. So for as far as the day call is concerned, that, that's taken yeah. care of them. Mm -hmm. Everything yeah. is online for them. For their, um, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I visited with Sandy the other day just because my wife and I were thinking before of going possibly to the Ozark. And I said, what kind of mischief are we going to get in if we <laughs> go to the Ozark? And because, you know, every time you pick up the phone or pick up turn the TV on, there, every place in America is hot, you shouldn't be there, possibly get contaminated. And I asked Sandy, so what are we doing here? What if we have somebody on secondary road? What if Ben and his kids go to somewhere on vacation? Do we have protocol? My, would my wife and I have to come back and quarantine for 14 days? I mean, what is our... I don't have the ability to shut my truck off for 14 days. So basically I said, we can't go. I can't afford to just shut my truck off and not work. Well, it isn't so much that if you go somewhere and come back, it's if someone in your household tests positive or you've been around someone who's been Just like the business down on Main Street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, my question is, they had someone come in there that tested positive. So they closed down, plain what if that person went to Fairway or High Vee or somewhere else? They didn't. So that's my question. I mean, this thing is just like, just bubbly. It is. There, there's no 100%. No, there's no there guarantees. No. And that's why we just again, do our best to slow it down. Right, we do our best to slow it down and do whatever we can. You wear your mask, wash your hands, sanitizers. I've got sanitizers in each one of my vehicles. When I, you know, you have, you just in my purse and my bag. So, but then next hour you listen on and they tell you that damn masks don't do nothing for you. It's, you're wasting your time and you're breathing it right back in. So, I mean, I'm sitting here with a mask on my, should I have been wearing it today? I don't. I know. It, it, it's, um, but the science behind it is, and that's what everybody keeps forgetting is there is true science behind this. There's a lot of people that are naysayers out there that are trying to, I'm not going to get in the middle of that. Yeah. But the science, the science behind it is wear your mask, wash your hands, say a hand sanitizer that is at least, what is it, 60%, I think it is. 70%. But I think, they, they put it to, I think they put it to 60 now. But anyway, there's a lot of them. But, you know, uh, that, that's the big thing right there. You got it. There's no way to be 100% in a bubble. You just can't, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. 
you know. There are some counties that have travel restriction policies. Mm -hmm. yeah. This has been going for our auditors association this last week. There seem to be a vast majority that do not, but there are some that do that says if you go anywhere outside of the border, you know, of the state, then you have to quarantine and da 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 da. But yeah, but in-state travel has been fine. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. yeah, I haven't seen any restrictions on it. So why are, why are some states, like I just saw New York, if you come from Iowa to New York, yeah. you have to quarantine for 14 days. Well, who's going to go to New no. York right. and quarantine no. for 14 days? Nobody. Right. Nobody. Yeah. I mean, I, and I didn't think that Iowa was, I mean, there's some hot spots. Well, we're, we're up in the we're up in the percentages though. Well, you're up to Florida. Florida. Oh, yeah. oh, we're hey, we're up there with Florida. And I can't yeah. remember the last one. What was it? Was it thirty percent higher than? I mean, we were in that. There was in that. They had the states all colored and different. We were right up. Iowa was right up there with hmm. Florida and mm -hmm. and um, Texas and yeah, Florida, yeah. Texas, Arizona. 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 There's uh, Minnesota now is where uh, they were. They were in a different color, but now mm -hmm. they're, they're, uh, um... But yeah, I mean, the cases rate is high, but the hospitalization the rate is down. Are down. So we're getting the cases, but people aren't getting sick from them. But they're, the sense of them, they're also making more tests available. Yeah, so... Before, we could only have so many tests, because they right. didn't have all the tests. Now right. they got tests. Yeah. So... But there are some areas where the hospitalization is, is higher, too. Mm -hmm. It just kind of depends upon... Your demographic? I think a lot of it's your demographic. It really is. A lot of it is your demographic. Because uh -huh. if you go down to these southern states, what's in southern states? Elderly people who have retired. Right. You know, and you go up to northern states, it says people are still trying to make a living. Right. And that's why I think right. it's what it is. And, the, and we have more, more area, we're more spread out, we're not so confined, we don't ride subways, we don't ride buses. So it's we're all right. we're on the same boat. Nobody wants right. to transfer it. Nobody wants to get it. Nobody wants to do. But by the same token, if we're doing something, I mean, begrudgingly, I'll put that flipping mask on. I don't want to wear it because I don't like. It. I know. But by the same token, um, I get my semi and then I meet people. One person in the <laughs> car. It's like they got their mask on. Why? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't wear it in the car. You're the only person in the car. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> but, but they're finding out more and more younger people are getting this, and they're the more cavalier. And oh, it's. it's and I don't get it. They're, 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 they're more yeah. socially. They don't, yeah. right. They're more socially active, and they don't. Man, they visited. don't get it sick. They get over it quicker. Yeah. But I do know somebody who was in their um, late 20s, early 30s. I'm not sure how old she is, but. She got it, and she had three kids, and her husband, they did not get it, but she was definitely ill. She was in the hospital, and they were going to have to put her in an intubator, but she started coming around, and they didn't have to intubate her. She said that was the most painful thing I've mm -hmm. ever gone through, and I never want to go I mean, she still, she had not been around her kids or anything, and she was in the hospital for two and a half weeks. Well. And you're talking to somebody that age. Mm -hmm. So you know it. And what it is is this, 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 this virus doesn't just, like you flu, it just kind of attacks your upper respiratory. But what this COVID is, and the way Deborah Burks explained it even better, was it attacks more than one, your, your multiple organs. You know, and that's what it is. And that's why it's so hard and so devastating, especially for the elderly mm -hmm. because they can't, they can't combat all yeah. of the... Uh, and they, they usually have other, other issues. issues like diabetes and high right. blood pressure and... Correct. And the people that have immune problems. <laughs> yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. it, there's no... And they're taking There's no easy answer. Yeah. When they do get a vaccine... I'm going to wait there's, 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 and I mean, I'm going to do the first one. They're not going to be able to make enough of it for everybody. How are you going to be able to make billions of... They haven't convinced me the flu vaccine works yet. I know. Every time I take the flu vaccine, I get the flu. It's like, what the hell did I do that for? But you can't get as hard as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all. Sure. This is like a lot of other things that deal with it. Coffee shop talk. Yeah. Common sense. 
would go a long ways. We know what the common sense things are. Right. Use that. Practice good, sound judgment. It will help. Yeah. <laughs> Are we having any issues, Peggy, with our spray that we purchased? That no, everybody likes it. Everybody likes it. Well. Awesome. 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 We use it there on the table go. all the time in the chairs. Then, you know, good. The then we're the making it right there. Steps in the right direction. Yeah. 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 Dave's continuing to keep the banister clean. Speaking of and Dave, just mm -hmm. one, how many applications oh. have we got? Can you hang around for a little while afterwards? I'll bring we sure will. We've got some part time and some full time. You can look at that. The deadline for the full time was Friday. And the deadline for the part-time is this Friday. This coming Friday. Okay. Well, I have all that. Good. Welcome to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye.